Hi, I'm Mike, one of the founders of Hummingbot, an open source framework that helps you build and run crypto trading bots. So we recently onboarded Vega Protocol, a new perpetual decentralized exchange as one of our sponsors. So I'm really happy to announce that we have now integrated their connector and want to take a few minutes and show you how to run a Hummingbot algo trading strategy on Vega. So let's get started. So the easiest place to find the guide that we've established to help you with this is going to the Vega connector page. So if you go to our documentation, go to connectors, then Dex connectors, and then Vega. And then, so this is the documentation page for Vega, which shows you the types of the connector, what functionalities the connector supports, some quick links, as well as a link to the connector guide. So the guide itself is in our academy section. So let me kind of walk you through the step-by-step -step through the guide. And, uh, you know, so hopefully this video will give you a, a quick and easy starting point to running bots on Vega with Hummingbot. So the first thing you need to do is to establish a Vega account. And so I think the easiest way to do that is with MetaMask Snap. So the first thing, let's go over to the Vega console. So I have it over here. So if you go left, hit launch console, then you'll go to this page here. So I think as it's loading, so instead of doing the redirect, I'll just take you to the page, which is right here. So this is the Vega exchange. And so you can see this is the ETH USCT perpetual market. So this is a perpetual market. So that means that when you do a trade, you're creating a long or a short perpetual position. And then you'll kind of realize a profit when you close out that position. And so because it's, because it's a perpetual position, you can use leverage and you can trade various assets just by depositing a single currency, which is usually USCC or USCT. So the first thing we're gonna do is we'll establish a Vega wallet and which allows us to deposit assets on the Vega. So that's what this step in the guide here is, create Vega wallet. So click on this over here and uh, you'll connect directly to Vega using your existing MetaMask address. Afterwards, you just need to agree to these permissions, and then you'll be successfully connected. Then you can deposit funds onto Vega by clicking this button here and making a deposit from your Ethereum wallet. Note that you're typically going to deposit either USDT or USDC, and you're essentially making a transfer onto the the new Vega blockchain from the Ethereum blockchain. You can also select the testnet and deploy assets from Ethereum Sepolia if you like as well. So that might be an option if you don't want to risk a lot of capital initially. For us, we've already deposited some test capital onto Vega. So let me show you how to connect Hummingbot to Vega and start running a bot on, on the exchange. So over here, I have cloned the Hummingbot GitHub repository. So this is, these are the contents uh, of the repo. And uh, so I've actually installed from source, but uh, I think the easiest way for new users to get started is using the Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is a command that comes pre-installed uh, if you install Docker Desktop. And so Docker Compose, Compose allows you to run kind of like pre-configured containers with a simple command, which is Docker Compose up. So we already have a Docker Compose configuration file that ships with the base repo. So you just need to run docker compose up with a dash D flag to start the Hummingbot image. And then you can attach to the name of the container, which is Hummingbot. Now, if, if it's your first time, you'll be asked to set a password, which is then used to encrypt any of the keys you store with Hummingbot. For me, I've already, I've already done this, so I will just enter my existing password and then if you're successful, you should see something like this, which is the Hummingbot interface. So Hummingbot, it's a local client, which means that it's a program that runs locally or in your computer, and it communicates with different exchanges using the credentials that you provide to the program. So the first thing we're going to do, run the connect command and pass in Vega, either Vega Perpetual, if we want to connect to mainnet, or Vega Perpetual testnet, if we want to connect to the Vega Fairground testnet. So, and then after we enter the exchange ID, then we can add the, uh, the, the wallet key and the, the, the MetaMask snap key that, uh, that will basically allow us to provide our credentials. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, consult the guide here. So uh, where uh, we tell you exactly what you need, that the two things you need are 
Number one, uh, the snap key, which is in over here, uh, which is this, this snap key, which is essentially your public address. And the other thing you'll need is, is your wallet C phrase. Uh, so essentially you're using your MetaMask address to connect to Vega. So after that, you can run the connect command Hungbot and then provide the uh, snap key as well as a wallet seed phrase in order to connect. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do that because I've already done so, but if you have connected successfully, then you can run the balance command and see your balances on, on Vega as well as any other exchanges you've connected to. So, so here we can see that we, we have a balance of 120 USCT in our Vega account. Okay, so now let's go ahead and configure a trading bot on Vega. For, for now, we'll keep it simple and we'll start with a simple directional strategy that uh, tries to go long when it thinks the market is over, over, oversold and there's like a buying opportunity. And we'll try to go short when it's, it feels like the market's been you know, kind of too high and it's ready to, to go short. So the indicator we're gonna use is RSI, the, the relative strength index, which is a classic technical indicator to determine when to go long and when to go short. So, so first let's create a configuration for our strategy. So run the create command with the dash dash script config flag, and you'll see a list of the configurable scripts in the directory. So one we'll run is the V2 directional RSI strategy. So this strategy, as I mentioned, will use RSI to determine indicators and it'll also use position executors to manage each position created, which applies take profit, a stop loss, as well as a time limit for every position created. So essentially it basically closes out each one and allows you to essentially measure the, the wins and losses for each one that you created. So let's first enter the different parameters and this will generate a configuration file. And it'll be easier for us to edit the file later on and just run that file and share that configuration between team members or, or, and track it later on. So we'll basically answer a series of questions that would define the various parameters that accepted by this script. So the first thing we'll define is where we'll trade. And uh, so let's put Vega here. Vega Perpetual is the, the name of the Vega exchange. So, and then we can put in the trading pair in Vega. Now in Vega, because of the, the, the trading conventions, we have to use ETH USDT USDT to pick the Ethereum USC perp trading pair, which is this one over here. So if you want to consult the guide, we do have a Vega trading pairs section in the guide that shows you how to, how to define the various trading pairs in Hummingbot that you want to trade. So let's trade on this pair. And now we need, now we need to select our candles exchange. So the candles exchange is a, basically a moving window of historical data that the bot uses to calculate the indicator. Now the, the candles feed basically uses historical data to populate that data as startup. So you don't have to wait for the bot to generate the indicator over time. But because of that, only certain exchanges have that capability. And so that's why we'll use Binance as the, as the candles exchange. Using Binance also has a nice property of being, because it's the most liquid exchange, you want to kind of ideally use the latest, you know, the, the most liquid exchange to detect how fast things are changing the market. So what we're really doing here is we're using the data from Binance, but executing trades on Vega. And so uh, likewise, just like, because we're trading on the ETH USDT pair on Vega, we also want to use data from the same market on Binance. Here we're configuring the, the length of interval of the historical data used to calculate our signal, which is RSI. Now we're defining the RSI level, enter into a long position and a short position. Since this is the demo, I'll just make it 50 for each one to, so that the strategy enters into a position when it starts. So basically whatever the RSI value is, it's going to either enter into a long or a short. And then, um, you know, here we'll pick our amount of base at, amount of asset used. So we typically define the, the asset order amount in terms of the quote asset, which is the second symbol of the trading pair, which is USCT. So essentially we're placing 30 USCT orders on the book. In, in terms of leverage, because it's a perpetual exchange, we can use leverage. And so let's use 10X leverage here as well. Here we're picking the position mode, which is basically, can you have both long and short positions on a perpetual exchange, or can you only have either long or short? Because we're doing directional, we're fine using one-way mode here. And, and now finally, Let's configure the properties of the position executor, 
which is the component that will create every time you create a position. The position executor is a part of our V2 framework. And uh, what it does is uh, it basically allows you to define a stop loss, a tape profit, and a, and a time limit for every position. So let's set 3% for the stop loss and 1% uh, for the tape profit, and then have uh, essentially, let's see, use five minutes for the time limit time limit for every position. Now, note there are other default parameters here. So I, I suggest you consult the V2 framework to understand exactly what all the other parameters that it's doing. But what we, uh, we believe that this will give you a, a way to run a fairly sophisticated strategy just from a, uh, just even if you're not a developer. So let's now save this configuration. This will get saved in the conf scripts directory in Hellingbot. Let's, let's, let's give that a name like RSI Vega so we can find this config later on. Okay, well, now that we've created our configuration, now we can run that with the start command. So let's run start with the script flag. Let's pick the v2 direction RSI, which was the script that we configured. And now let's use the dash dash conf flag and select the file that we just created, which was conf RSI Vega. So by default, this looks for the script in the scripts folder and the, the conf in the conf scripts folder. Now you can also auto start this from the command line, but for, for here, we're using the command from the Hunlock client itself. So when I run start, it's going to pull the candles from Binance and connect to the Vega connector. And now it's gonna, it's gonna make sure that it can access the Vega data node and, uh, and, and can connect the, the node endpoint. So, and use that for market data before placing orders. So it looks like it's still doing that. And, uh, and then once it's ready, it will hopefully place, place order. So there it goes. Now it has placed a sell order. Looks like the, the RSI was, was higher than 50 and now it's, it's, uh, it's basically hitting. So, so I, I think that, uh, I think it looks like it's, uh, there's some issues now and I'm going to, I think what I'm going to try to do now is, uh, and th this is something we do see if you, if your data node is offline, I'm going to try to stop this. And then uh, I'm going to use our own data node and retry this and see if improved the latency using this connector. Okay. Well, it looks like changing the node did actually help. So I did have to start and stop it again, but uh, after I did so, you can see that it uh, did create the sell order and then as well as a buy order, which was a stop loss for that. And if we run the status command, we can see that, see, open okay, so this was the position executed that was created is running right now. And so you can see, uh, it's, you know, it is uh, running a slight loss. This is the, the amount of fees we have, and uh, this is how old it was. And um, so you can see after it's, you know, there's, there's already a, and the, this is the, 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 the stop loss order for this position. So afterwards, basically this position will get filled either by take profit, stop loss, or the time limit. And then the bot will seek to put on more long and short positions depending on the RSI indicator. If you do stop the bot, the, the, the bot will try to cancel any outstanding orders as well as, 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 as positions. And so it will basically do a market buy order to close that position for you. And then if you run the history command, the history command will tell you the performance, basically gives you a list of the, the trades you've done and uh, show you, um, you know, how, how much, how much performance your, your bot has done. So you can see that you know, we've done two trades here and then we've you know, uh, lost a bit of money, but of course this is just for demo purposes. So I hope that uh, gives you a, some insights into running a, a bot on Vega. We're, we're happy to work, we've been working with them to try to democratize algo trading and to try to give everyone the power that sophisticated people on Wall Street already have. Thank you very much.